One, two, three. Let's make sure this is going live. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to the live stream. And today, what we're going to do, we're uh, going to be talking about Julian Assange. Uh, open discussion. We're going to catch up on the news. We're going to see what's going on, where it might lead. There's a few articles that have come out, a fair bit of news coverage and whatnot. Okay. And today is um, October 27th, 2019. Um, and that's about it. That's basically the open discussion um, sort of intro we're going to do. This is part one. And we're going to do part two on. Let me do this right now. Part two is going to take place on October 29th, on Tuesday at uh, 12 30 p.m my time we're going to do that okay and the odds are we're going to be doing uh, one of these on a regular basis maybe once a month um, maybe once a week depending on how things play out okay um, aside from that we're going to wait until uh, people start rolling in now i have uh, i'm going to be doing uh, what do you call it or screen capture as well what's this called it's called uh, display capture right because there's certain articles that i think we're gonna end up reading uh one of them is this one by um, uh, craig murray okay and he sort of gave a nice little update of uh, what was taking place and whatnot so we're gonna uh, have a read through this article um, i've already read it uh, once and i posted it in our discord page and if you want to follow some of the stuff that we're doing here's our discord page um, and the link is in the description it will be in the description of this video once this video is loaded on to bitshoot and uh, we've done previous uh in the previous uh current events stream uh that we did this is an announcement going on I'm live right now on the previous uh current events uh, stream that we did I mentioned that uh, we're not going to be loading on any of the current events, uh, news and politics stuff on YouTube anymore. However, any discussion that we have uh, about Julian Assange, we will load on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to make sure uh, the information regarding Julian Assange goes as far and wide as we can. Okay. Uh, twitching jason welcome welcome chicho pumped i caught a live stream hope chat <laughs> hope let's check this out hope you're super well i'm doing really well brother thank you very much twitching jason um uh, doing pretty good enjoying uh, enjoying life uh unfortunate of uh, what's going on with uh, julian assange very unfortunate okay hopefully we're it's showing a little bit of lag here for me. Hopefully, we're not going to lose the lose the live stream. If there are any problems, please let me know. We shouldn't be lagging too much because uh, I am l connected directly. But we might end up losing uh, the stream. Who knows what's going on with the powers that be and the connections and the ISPs and and whatnot. Abdullah, how are you doing? Abdullah, Abdullah Hala Hadat, 1986. Salam, everyone. So glad that I finally have been able to catch another chat after a good month of being uh, scarce. Working the afternoon to evening swing shift has made this time frame rare. Oh, has it? Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I've mentioned that I try to switch up the times a fair bit, but I've been staying pretty consistent in the in the time frame that we have been uh, which is basically either mornings to the afternoons i haven't really been doing too many late evening sessions but i might start doing those as well um, it's just time hasn't allowed me to do stuff uh that stuff uh too often okay um, as far as let's check this out let's close off this guy seems everything seems to be going well um i'm gonna wait a couple more minutes but what i want to do is uh start basically reading off some of the articles going through some of the news that we're going to be covering and we might have lost uh 
lost the connection. Let me just check, make sure. Da, 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 da. Did I save a thing? No, it seems like it's going. Okay, good enough. Okay. Now, if you don't know what's going on with Julian Assange, uh, you need to find out what's going on with Julian Assange. Okay. So it goes, so it goes, so it goes. Uh, you need to find out what's going on with Julian Assange. It's one of the most important uh, events taking place right now. There's a lot of stuff going on politically, globally, uh, that's taking place. Uh, maybe protests in Chile, uh, Spain, France with the yellow vest, Hong Kong with uh, uh, Lebanon, with uh, like everywhere, right? With Honduras, with ecuador with, with the government in ecuador picking up and moving shop to another city right because people are so upset with the government and what they've done evening valiance how are you doing old comrades old comrades indeed void how's life oh god yes i think i missed out on two to three streams praise the sun you are here <laughs> Hydro. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Glad to have you here, Void. Glad to have you here. Um, it's going to be an important stream, this one we're doing, really. And again, uh, I'll do a little re recap of our intro for the stream, which is basically we would do an open discussion regarding what's going on with Julian Assange. Okay, this is part one. Part two is going to take place on Tuesday, and we're going to start doing these on a regular basis. Okay, now I've set aside two hours for these streams we might go longer we might go shorter but i doubt it there's a lot of stuff to cover uh depending how the conversation is going uh but we're going to do at least one of these a month uh trying to stay up to up to date with what's going on with julian assange super nas nice. hey Cho, hope you're all good doing good brother doing good super busy super busy and enjoying it i like being busy i like having a lot to do that way i don't have to you know there's no room for procrastination if i'm procrastinating on one issue then i just take care of another issue right that's one of the tricks that i have in life just have a whole bunch of things going on at the same time and you don't really procrastinate if you ever need downtime you just pause everything right take a nice bill hicks break analyze process learn uh, breathe exercise do whatever you need to do to get your headspace in the right uh, right mindset i guess and then get back to business again because a lot of business needs to be taken care of right funky monkey how are you doing hey chicho greetings from the uk my brain is zapped from doing uni work all day but i can't turn down a chicho stream especially such an important one now ah, thanks for being here funky monkey hope you're well doing well hope you're enjoying uh well it sounds like you're enjoying school it's hard work but uh payoff can be substantial can be extremely substantial okay so look if you guys have any questions or anything let me know okay um as for just one of the aspects of why this is so important what's going on with julian assange and wikileaks okay i'll just lay down one thing and then we're gonna start reading some text now you guys let me know this is i'm going to use a text-to-speech reader okay we're going to read this article first so i'm going to read the first paragraph or i'm going to get the computerized voice to read the first paragraph okay i'm used to this i the way i do research is um i watch like news and politics and a lot of work that i do i i you know i watch a lot of videos but if i'm trying to catch the news if i'm focused i run the videos double speed or two and a half times speed we're not going to do that with the videos any videos that we're going to watch okay because that just becomes too much if you're not used to it it just overwhelms you right so that's one thing i do i do read articles myself just read them stuff like this but when i'm doing insane amount of work uh which is a lot of the time i get a text-to-speech reader to read it to me okay is there any cons to wikileaks i mean it can only be good things no uh is there any cons everything has a pro and a con right is there any cons um considering where we are in our current political economic social environment globally 
whatever cons there are to WikiLeaks, they're irrelevant, right? Because there's a lot of work to be done for us to to really create a society that we all desire, right? That we all want, that is equ equitable, uh, just, uh, fair, that is transparent, uh, that provides us transparency for those in power, right? That doesn't enslave humanity, destroy the environment, exploit resources, wage war, that doesn't hold power accountable, right? Like if you consider where we are politically, economically, and the pros that WikiLeaks offers, the benefits that WikiLeaks offers, there are no cons to WikiLeaks. There is no negative to WikiLeaks. It's minute, right? Once we bring the scales to a level where we can actually talk about some of the maybe uh, uh, negative effects of WikiLeaks, then we can talk about them. Until then, WikiLeaks is the most important site online is the most important organization active right now and just to let you know why i consider that to be okay it should be obvious to everyone that our history human history uh geopolitics economics what we have been taught in school and what the corporate propagandists tell us is transpiring is a lie right just, just look back at what you were taught in our centralized indoctrination centers or centralized education centers just look back at what you were taught when you were in school okay and look at the present and see what is being taught right now in those schools and really appreciate what wasn't taught to you and what has come on the forefront just to give you an example i'm in canada i went to high school elementary school high school in canada university in canada right in high school we were never taught about residential schools where the centralized state took the indigenous population the children from hijacked sleepy waves how are you doing hijacked children from their families and took them into centralized holding cells where they were physically verbally sexually abused some of them murdered and buried in our mar unmarked graves this was never taught to us in school it is being taught to kids now in school right so that's i was in school high school you know 35 years ago right after 30 years all of a sudden this history is being taught in schools right so just imagine what we are not being told right now just imagine what is taking place in the world right now that we're not privy to right wikileaks is the avenue for us to know what's going on in the world and what is being done in our name okay uh, so it's basically the only time in human history that i know of where we have an accurate record of human history and it's been basically 10 years 12 years of wikileaks right so this is the only time that historians 20 years 50 years 100 years from now can look back on and actually read what was taking place do research on what was taking place where the information was being revealed in real time there is no other point in history that has that has taken place so anything that we think we know about how geopolitics took place the economics of it the the political dealings the war the reasons why war was being waged the genocides that were being committed the war crimes that were being committed anything before wikileaks you have to question you have to really do your research and you'd be lucky to find the truth right because the victor tells the truth WikiLeaks does not care about the victor or the victim. WikiLeaks just reveals what's taking place. Extremely important, extremely important. Okay. 
twitching Jason I don't want to steer away from the topic but I'm confused uh, curious if you saw or listened to Snow Snowden on Joe uh, Joe Rogan report I listened to some of it I've been mainly following uh, what's going on with Julian Assange I'm pretty sure Snowden must have addressed uh, what's going on with Julian Assange right but uh, I didn't catch that segment I watched a little bit of it but I put that interview with Joe Rogan and Snowden on the back burner uh, because I wanted to make sure I was caught up with the news with what was going on with Julian Assange so I could at least share some of the key pieces of information that I found for that for you guys okay JJ man how are you doing hi Chicho Chicho do you think we can discuss what's going on in Chile uh, sleepy waves is part of it for sure Chile basically uh, Chile is simple it's it's austerity it's neoliberalism neoconservatism uh, what they've done is basically looted Chile to no end right which is basically um, what has been taking place in the Western world right Chile was the example that all the neoconservatives and all the uh, the, the corporations were praising as the perfect example of how society should be run where you can privatize everything and uh, and everybody will be everybody will be taken care of which is definitely not the case it's the one country where it has the highest disparity in the world they've cut back on social spending education uh, pensions job security is gone unions are have been destroyed uh, news is propagandized billionaires run the country and they're looting the country right uh, what's going on in Chile is basically what we're seeing take place in many parts of the world and what's going to continue to take place in many parts of the world it's going to just amplify until we take care of business right and WikiLeaks is a huge part of that huge part of that right I hope that's uh, you know we can talk about it more um, but we definitely need to cover what's going on with Julian Assange I'm shocked that Canada is only just now seriously coming to terms with the residential schools and their legacy no wonder my native friend from Canada calls it clat clanat uh, Clanada, Clanada, Clanada. Is that the reference to uh, Ku Klux Klan? Is that I don't, I've never heard Clanada before. But yeah, it like as far as the native population goes in Canada, man, they got a right to be pissed, right? And just to let you know, I went to school for three years in high school, right attached to a reservation, right, and. I had a lot of interactions with the native community not as friends but as occupiers really even though I was in high school and we had friends we associated with and we were friends but we really didn't understand the mindset the the world that they were living in right only after the fact we come out of high school 30 years later we go oh my god they did what right and we I knew that a little more uh, I knew I knew about it before it started you know becoming into the forefront but it took me 15 years coming out of high school to really grasp what the occupying forces really in Canada the Europeans did to the native communities here right horrendous horrendous right I absolutely uh, Martimus, how are you doing? I absolutely agree, especially taking um, talking about geopolitics or military politics. WikiLeaks will be invaluable in the future. I recently finished my thesis on Agent Orange, wow, used in Vietnam, and did some research at the JFK Library. I constantly found myself questioning the information because all from the U.S. Presidential Administration. Yeah, one hundred percent. What is neoliberalism really? Neoliberalism. There's different definition of neoliberalism. There's a peer. There's a there was a time where I would, um, I had certain definitions I would stick to, right? But neoliberalism is the basically the mentality that has been running the Western governments for the last three four decades. I've lost faith in humanity, Tyler R six. Have you seen the lolly shit on four trampy? It's. Uh, fucking disgusting I, I haven't seen it and I don't go there uh, Tyler um, I'm gonna allow this I'm not sure why it's not allowing it and I want to make sure that our chat is showing up on uh, 
yeah our chat is showing up there too which is good uh, da, 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 da. you're seeing on the chat what i'm seeing so um maybe that's not the best idea because if we get trolls we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, get a little bit of uh, troll action going on uh, but we'll see how it goes okay so gang let me know if this text-to-speech reader is adequate adequate for you if it's something you're okay with uh listening to okay so i'm gonna read i'm gonna get the computer to read this first paragraph because i we really want to read this first paragraph if you guys don't like it i'll read it myself just my voice right but it's gonna go a lot slower i'm gonna make mistakes so let me know if you're okay with this voice on the text to speech reader okay update i have received scores of requests to republish and slash or translate this article it is absolutely free to use and reproduce and i should be delighted if everybody does the world should know what is being done to julian so far over 200,000 people have read it on this blog site alone and it has already been reproduced on myriad other sites some with much bigger readerships than my own I have seen translations into German, Spanish, and French and at least extracts in Catalan and Turkish. I only ask that you reproduce it complete or, if edits are made, plainly indicate them. Many thanks. So, Voy, you're saying try um, Microsoft Brian. I'm not sure how to set that up right now. How do we set that up? How do we set that up? Where's my text to speech reader? I think this is just uh, on Microsoft Brian. Let's do a little search. Is that a setting I have to do for da, 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 da. get Brian games? Microsoft Brian. I'm not sure what that is. Fixing Microsoft. Brain. Oh, Microsoft Brain, not Brian. Did you say Brain or Brian? <laughs> you read it. That voice is annoying. Okay, Julian and Edward Stone are such great people. We need more whistleblowers. Yeah, as well as uh, Manning and uh, as well as Manning and and Hammond, right? As well as Manning and Jeremy Hammond, right? More people would be whistles bros if they didn't have uh, families that they cared about. Yeah. And don't forget Chelsea Manning. Yeah. Her contributions to helping WikiLeaks exposing U.S. war crimes in Iraq. Yeah. It's basically animated. Yeah. Tyler, um, I don't want to go there. Okay. It's generally discussed. Yeah. I believe I understand that there's a tremendous amount of disgusting stuff going on online and you know if you want to know what some of those disgusting stuff are the first place people should be looking into is uh, epstein right uh tyler if you haven't heard of those people go to our uh, discord page in the politics section there's links on jeremy hammond and chelsea manning you should know about uh she's she's the person that revealed uh the war crimes, uh, the Iraq war footage, the collateral murder video. Here, let's bring up collateral murder video. Okay. Uh, murder video. Okay. Collateral murder video. Boop. There we go. Here's a collateral murder video. Let's play this. Okay, here's a short version. And uh, uh, and then we'll read the update. What's the difference between liberalism and neoliberalism? Uh, sleepy waves, I would have to look it up. Okay. Neoliberalism is different than neoliberalism. I believe neoliberalism is more centered towards privatization and everything, centralization of everything, right? Elimination of uh grassroots organizations liberalism is is more uh benign uh, okay liberalism is uh, it has some serious problems as well there's some serious problems associated with liberals right now with the pc culture and whatnot i don't have discourse don't intend to getting okay here tyler uh 
here's the collateral murder video okay I will be back shortly I'm gonna take my uh, medicines brew up a pot of a chamomile tea and roll the joint okay awesome Abdullah enjoy browse for trend but not discord okay uh, pop up <laughs> is laughing to avoid is like this here's the collateral murder video okay now let me make sure that this is a good size for us to play it this is one of the most important things that was revealed through wikileaks there are others we did a reading of vault 7 okay um, so let me play this for you guys okay which is a good size so uh, if you guys want I'll make it a little bit bigger so you see it it's 17 minutes so I'm gonna let this play okay let me know if there's any problems if you want the volume turned down at all and let me read this hold on let me read this stuff for you guys okay here's a quote from George Orwell let me make sure that this is legit okay our chat might be getting in the way of it and my face is a little too big so I'm gonna readjust this so you guys see the full oops let me reduce my image so you see more of the video okay this is one of the most important things you'll see online one of the most important revelations from WikiLeaks okay and let me bring this guy down Geared towards privatization of what? Privatization, sleepy ways, privatization of everything. Water is privatized in Chile. Okay. Education is going huge privatization. Uh, management of the infrastructure privatizing. Okay. They even have private militaries, private policing. It's private everything. Okay. It's easy to get doxxed on Discord. I just browse Fortran here and there. It's a great site, but there, there's some questionable people on it. Yeah, Tyler, I have no problems with Fortran. That's, you know, I just don't. My time is very limited, right? So let me read you the quotes from uh, what they have up for this collateral murder video from WikiLeaks, okay? And, uh, and we'll build from there. And we don't have to watch this whole thing but uh, it's pretty important if you haven't seen it you need to watch this and this is the short version so quote from george or orwell quote political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable and to give the appearance of solidarity to pure wind solidity to pure wind okay let's continue to play this collateral murder video okay and there's a website for it and this came out in 2010 quote on the morning of July 12 2007 two Apache helicopters using 30 mm cannon fire killed about a dozen people in the Iraqi suburb of New Baghdad two children were also wounded although some of the men appear to have been armed the behavior of nearly everyone was relaxed the U.S. military initially claimed that all the dead were anti-Iraqi forces or insurgents. Quote, the stories of most of those who were killed are unknown, but among the dead were two Reuters news employees, Said Chamag and Na Namir Nur Eldin. Okay. If you guys, I'm going to turn down the volume of this a little bit. It's pretty loud from my end okay quote Said Shamag's grieving son holds a picture of his late father Said was a respected Reuters driver and assistant he was 40 
when he died and is survived by his wife and their four children. Nur, na, na, quote, Namir Nur, Nur Eldin, age 22, came from a family of journalists and was considered one of the best war photographers in Iraq, end quote. Quote. This is from uh, a quote from Steve Crisp, Reuters Middle East photo editor. Quote, I can still see Namir walking out of the Reuters compound when his cap with his cameras slung over his shoulder, laughing with Saeed on his way to his last assignment. End quote. Quote, many of us felt Saeed was a better shield than an armored vehicle. He would always tell me that he would not hesitate to lose his life to protect one of us. Sadly, he was right. Okay. This is Thar al Sudani, Reuters photographer in Baghdad. Okay. A quote from Lieutenant Cor uh, Col Colonel Scott Bletchwell, spokesman for U.S. forces in Baghdad, New York Times. Quote, the U.S. military claimed the victims died in a battle that took place between U.S. forces and insurgents. Quote, there is no question that coalition forces were clearly engaged in combat operations against a hostile force. Okay, keep this in mind when the video starts. And keep in mind, this is what Chelsea Manning revealed. Okay. This is what Chelsea Manning leaked to WikiLeaks. And this collateral murder video is one of the main reasons that the United States is after Julian Assange. It is not about Russia Gate or any conspiracy theories that the Democratic Party is releasing and stuff like this. This is one of the core reasons this video and the information that Chelsea Manning released to WikiLeaks that the full force of the United States government and its uh, deep state institutions including uh, a lot of the same parties from the uk and western governments are after julian assange right because this one man julian assange through wikileaks has revealed more information more truth about the way our governments our societies operate than any other human being that has lived okay keep that in mind Quote, Reuters demanded an investigation into the killings. Remember, the two journalists that were killed in by the U.S. military in this video were Reuters journalists, right? Quote, U.S. military authorities concluded that the actions of the soldiers and pilots involved were in accordance with the law of armed conflict and the rules of engagement. Okay, end quote. Quote, in August 2007, Reuters used the Freedom of Information Act to request a copy of the video evidence taken from the primary helicopter involved in the attack. The video has not been released until now. Okay, thanks to Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks.
quote, WikiLeaks obtained and decrypted the video you are about to see. WikiLeaks exists to help you safely reveal important material to the world. Oh, sorry, let me read that again. WikiLeaks exists to help you safely reveal important material to the world. We have an unbroken record in protecting confidential sources. Contact us, wikileaks.org. And they have a perfect track record. WikiLeaks has never had to uh, retract anything they've uh, they've released. They've never uh, revealed a source to anyone. This is not true for any other news agency out there, right? Which is again one of the reasons that the United States government and deep state, as well as other governments in the Western world and the deep states in those governments are after Julian Assange. He is literally the most important human being on this planet that is being persecuted, that is helped to reveal more information about the powers that rule the world uh, on our behalf, right? On our behalf. Once Crazy Horse is done, 
And get pictures over. Vagina. Circuit 20 is the location. The hotel's 26, crazy horse, 1 8. Oh, yeah, look at those dead bastards. Nice. 2 6, crazy horse, 1 8. Nice. Let's shoot. Thank you. Hotel 26, Crazy Horse 1A. Hotel 26, Crazy Horse 1A. Crazy Horse 1A, Bushmaster 7, go ahead. And Bushmaster 7, Crazy Horse 1A. Uh, location of bodies, Mike Bravo, 5458. Eight, eight, six, one, seven, over. It's Crazy Horse 1 8, that's a good copy. They're on a street in front of an open uh, courtyard with a bunch of blue uh, trucks, a bunch of vehicles in the courtyard. There's one guy moving down there, but he's, uh, he's a one. Alright, we'll let him know so they can hurry up and get over here. It's a 1 8. Uh, we also have one individual uh, appears to be wounded, crawl, trying to crawl away. Roger, we're gonna move down there. Roger, we'll cease fire. Yeah, we won't shoot anymore. He's getting up. If he has a weapon though in his hand? No, no, I haven't seen one yet. We'll see. You guys got that guy crawling right now on the curb? Yeah, I got him. I put two rounds near him, and uh, you guys are shooting over there too, so. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, Roger that. Bushmaster 36 Element is uh, Hotel Roger, I'm just uh, trying to make sure that you guys have my turb over. Roger, we got the turb. Come on, buddy. I gotta do is pick up a weapon. Crazy, we're just push back to five. We're push back to four, break. We're right below you, right time now. Can you walk us onto that location over? Roger. I'll, I'll pop flares. We also have one individual moving. We're looking for weapons. If we see a weapon, we're going to engage. Now, Bushmaster, we have a van that's approaching and picking up the bodies. Where's that van at? Right down there by the body. Okay, yeah. Bushmaster, Crazy Horse, we have individuals going to the scene. Looks like possibly uh, picking up bodies and weapons. Hey, we need to stop that so we can get down there. We need to stop. You see my little... Roger. Uh, break. Crazy Horse 1-8. Uh, Request permission to uh, engage. Okay, I'm picking up the wounded. Yeah, we're trying to get permission to engage. Come on, let us shoot. A push master, Crazy Horse 1-8. We're taking him. Push master, Crazy Horse 1-8. It's Bushmaster 7, go ahead. Roger, we have a black SUV, or a bongo truck picking up the bodies. Fuck. Request permission to engage. It's Bushmaster 7, Roger. This is Bushmaster 7, Roger, engage. 1 8, engage. Clear. Come on. Clear. Clear. We're engaged.
Pastor Crazy Horse 1A. A vehicle appears to be disabled. Uh, there was approximately four to five individuals in vehicle moving bodies. Your lead, Bradley, should take the next right. That's uh, cruising east down the road. No more shoot. This is Captain James Hall, Army Chaplain. Quote, eight minutes after the attack, ground troops arrived on the scene. Quoting the captain now. We pulled up and stopped, and I could hear them over the intercom saying they couldn't drive the Bradley's tanks in because there were too many bodies and didn't want to drive over them. Okay. Now, this video this is extremely important to keep in mind when the van showed up okay when they were removing wounded as someone made the comment in the chat there were no guns to be seen at all okay so there was no guns to be seen the people that drove up and there was a couple of people that ran in from the neighborhood to help the wounded they could see people that were shot they were dying right so they came and they were trying to take the bodies to the hospital right to be taken care of they were unarmed and the u.s mil military lit them up they shot people trying to help wounded okay the wounded that is war crime pure war crime shooting like it is insane right now this video being released just imagine in what kind of world we live in right now the person that released this video okay to wikileaks is sitting in jail paying a fine of one thousand dollars per day because she refuses to testify behind closed doors Julian Assange and that's Chelsea Manning Julian Assange who is the main journalist the main editor and the person that really gave birth to WikiLeaks that is the platform that revealed these war crimes to the world what was taking place is has been basically psychological torture for the last how many years seven eight years he's sitting in jail right now waiting to be extradited and handed over to the people that committed these war crimes okay. and this is happening in a sense where julian assange is not in u.s jurisdiction so the importance of this case with julian assange means that if julian assange is extradited to the united states it means that the united states is considering the world to be its domain and anyone that criticized the US US military that points to war crimes being committed the United States government has the right to take them from whatever country they're in into the United States to be thrown in jail okay this is the significance of what's taking place right now with Julian Assange uh, the rest of this video is just more of this, but it just shows the bodies and stuff. Uh, maybe we'll play it a little bit more. Um, maybe we won't. We might skip through it. 
um, there is more. Maybe I'll play it more and read some of the text with it. Uh, JJ Man, thank you for sharing this video, Chicho. This is actually my first time viewing it. Uh, my pleasure, JJ Man. Thank you for Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and everyone that sacrificed their lives and, um, you know, their freedoms to bring us this footage, right? I also had never seen this video before. Uh, Green Tech. Green Tech, I was confused because they did not shoot the wounded guy for the reason that he was not armed. But then they get the go ahead to shoot the van guys who are also unarmed. I don't understand the rules of reasoning there. It's war crimes. It's people. And one thing you have to appreciate that soldiers in the military are drugged up to the yin yang, right? They're, they're operating on pure adrenaline, lack of sleep. They got tons of chemicals in them. Okay. So, uh, it's not a sort of a everyday type of activity. This is high stress, high anxiety, uh, do or die situation. They assume to be do or die situation. Obviously, they were the the soldiers in the Apache helicopter were never under threat, and the commands were coming up from higher up. So this is really a perfect example of us seeing how bureaucracy operates, right? As long as they were given a go ahead, they thought it was reasonable to commit war crimes, to kill dozens of innocent people, right? And there's children in this as well. We'll continue this because they talk about, you know, there's a couple of kids in there and, and whatnot as well. Vex, how are you doing? How's the life? It finally happened. I can make a stream. Also, how is it still light out there? You're a time traveler. It's uh, what time is it? It's five o'clock right now here. It's almost five o'clock. We really do live in a clown world. We do, Tyler. We do. Did you watch uh, Joe Rogan interview with Snowden? I watched parts parts of it, Vex. Um, but I've been mainly catching up on what's going on with Julian Assange and doing some back end stuff and trying to get caught up with this. I'm glad the Snowden interview is getting so many views. Yeah, same here. I'll definitely be watching it at some point. Sleepy face. I don't know why the Americans love to praise the veterans. Look at the bullshit. Uh, I consider soldiers to be victims of the military industrial complex as well. The psychological effect that this must have on soldiers that commit war crimes in the heat of the moment and then think about it days hours sometimes hours days weeks months or years later that's why suicide rate among veterans is so much higher than the general population because they can't live with what they've done right i think a lot of the veterans do deserve praise especially the conscripted for pretty bad stuff like vietnam yeah yeah i think soldiers are victims inherently especially the old, older vets a lot of them uh, regret what they did later on but at the time I guess they aren't acting with a clear head no no they don't uh, green tech uh, yeah the cult of the American soldier is very strange and even unsettled a lot of my veteran friends upon them leaving the military I don't feel bad for soldiers they choose to enlist and become the weapons for governments uh, not all sleepy waves some in some countries they're drafted you have no choice than to serve in the military right uh, in the united states unfortunately the uh, and canada as well the programming the brainwashing is so powerful that people actually think that giving up the right to life liberty pursuit of happiness to corporations that they run the u.s military and western militaries as well is their only way to get an education to be to be debt free or to get a job yeah in the u.s yeah in the u.s for sure but a lot of people are in extreme poverty they're the only way out of that poverty for them is to well one of the outs for them is to join the military which is what they sell right i think recently um it came out that the u.s military was easily able to meet its quota of recruits one of the reasons for that is because People are jobless. They're in debt. They want an education. They can't afford education. It's just a whole 
machine really a uh, corporate machine working to wage war around the war around the globe as well as keep the american population impover impoverished so they have enough cannon fodder to wage their wars right and with automation we don't know where this going this is going to go right i think in some cases it does help people get on the straight and narrow um, those lacking discipline and education the military clearly prey on those kinds of people too yeah they do should we continue with the video let's continue with the video let's continue with the video because this is really uh, what brought the full weight of the american government down on wikileaks and julian assange okay I just drove over a body. Yeah. Hyper 5 2 report free chains on 4. Maybe it was a visual. I just drove over a body. Yeah. Hyper 5 2 report free chains on 4. Okay, let me read this as well. Quote, the, sur the soldiers find two wounded, ch wounded children in the minivan. Okay, let me read that again. Quote, the soldiers find two wounded children in the minivan. The treat treating soldier eventually decides to evacuate the children to the medical center at the nearby U.S. base of Rastama Rastamaya. However, higher command orders that the children are instead to be handed to the Iraqi police and be taken to an Iraqi hospital. This could mean poorer standards, standards of medical treatment and additional delay. Let me read that again okay this is the u.s soldiers talking ready quote well it's their fault for bringing their kids into a battle that's right another soldier confirms okay let's read that again well quote well it's their fault for their bringing their kids into a battle that's right the second soldier confirms right battle that's right 
let me read this. This is the, here's the link. Uh, oh, thank you, Valiance. This is the collateral murder video from WikiLeaks. The video, um, blue, this video, Blueberry. Yeah, Intelligent Blueberry. This is uh, the collateral murder video that Chelsea Manning, we believe, okay, assume that Chelsea Manning released to WikiLeaks. I don't know if she's come out and confirmed that she was the one. I think she has, right? Released to WikiLeaks plus, plus a number of documents, right? Back in 2010. And this is one of the main reasons that Julian Assange is being persecuted right now, has been tortured for a number of years. Okay. Why the full force of the US military is trying to destroy WikiLeaks and anyone that's been helping them. Okay. Funky monkey. Uh, when they fire those guns, are they viewing it through the screen that we see? And how much of a disconnect does that create between the soldiers and their actions i don't know about i don't know uh funky monkey i'm assuming they have they're really far away because the people on the ground couldn't hear the apache helicopters i know they're supposed to be running silent and stuff like that but i'm pretty sure you should be able to hear humming if they were any close right so i'm pretty sure the apache helicopters are at a fair distance away so if they're watching this this close up they must have some kind of uh binoculars on or something like this where they're watching it i don't know if they're watching it on a screen or not okay i know the people who are flying drones that are doing the same things with drones are sitting somewhere else and watching everything on the view screen just like a game and a lot of the drone operators the soldiers i've seen interviews with them read articles by them and stuff like this they're traumatized right they got ptsd and they've never even set foot outside of the United States because they realize that they've killed women and children, right? Innocent people, the shot up wedding parties, right? It's like a video game to them. It's honestly vile. Okay. Let me read another quote that has popped up in the video. Okay. This is from Major Brent Cummings, Executive Officer, 216 U.S. Army. Washington Post uh, uh, released this. Quote, no innocent civilians were killed on our part deliberately we took great pains to prevent that i know that two children were hurt and we did everything we could to help them i don't know how the children were hurt okay this is u.s military's response to what took place in this video okay this is before the video was released right this is before we could witness what was happening now we're seeing this right we know this situation, what happened for real, right? Complete war crime, complete cover up. Innocent people lit up. Children shot up. Children refused treatment. Ref the military refused to take them to a US hospital where their lives could be saved or their limbs could be saved. We, I don't know. I can't remember if these two kids lived or not. I think they did live, I, but don't quote me on that, right? we know all of that now at the time the u.s military this is what they were releasing now just imagine how many times you have heard western governments or any military in the world say these words about another situation where they killed innocent people right do you believe them i don't you'd be a fool to believe them and you'd be a propagandist to prop propagate their bs right it's like the video game to the uh, green tech i bet we are 50 years off of the apaches being controlled from a distant like drones too i don't think they need to control apaches once they have the drones every time everything has become miniaturized right once you have the drones once you have the robots you don't even need the soldiers anymore all right probably less than that tyler i agree probably less than that honestly in my experience air force guys tend to be more pro-military and eat up the cult of the American soldier because they don't get the full brunt of war compared to, say, my army and marine buddies. Yeah, Abdullah, here's one thing. One of the people that I know uh, was a Air Force person that became a, one of the greatest 
American voices in history is Howard Zinn. And he was a World War II bomber pilot, right? He was distant from what he was doing. But then after the war, he became who he was and wrote the books that he did and gave the lectures that he did. He is brilliant, Howard Zinn. Okay. Let's continue with the video. Oh, the two children. You see the two children in the front sitting in the passenger side? Right? We didn't notice, notice this before, right? This is the van that they just shot up, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see it again. Come on, let us shoot. A push master, Crazy Horse 1A. We're taking him. I'm just going to read some more text that's popped up in the video. Quote, when we reached the spot where Namir was killed, the people told us that two journalists had been killed in an air attack an hour earlier. Said Ahmed uh, Sahib, the agent France press photographer who had been traveling in a car several 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 blocks behind Mr. Nur Alidin, but was delayed by the chaos in the area. He said, he said he was in touch with Miss, Mr. Nur Alidin by by cell phone until his colleague was killed. And this continues. We'll read the rest. They had arrived, quote, they had arrived, got out of the car and started taking pictures and people gathered. Mr. Sahib said it looked like the American helicopters were firing against any gathering in the area because when I got out of my car and started taking pictures, people gathered and an American helicopter fired a few rounds, but they hit the houses nearby and we ran for cover, end quote. Ah, Ahmad Sahab, uh, AFP war photographer, New York Times. And there's a dedication here okay dedication quote this video is dedicated to the families of the people killed in this attack and to all the victims of war whose fates remain unknown credits our courier source julian assange producer creative director rob gone gripch co-producer alan b d alan db chief engineer research kristen hofsnan story development ingi uh, ragnar igasen visual editor research bridget john john's daughter co-producer script right WikiLeaks decryption and transmission team at and there's a list of people thank you Ahmed Ali Reuters Baghdad bureau chief RUV Iceland's national broadcaster okay. WikiLeaks needs your help okay 
And here's a video, uh, and I watched this a while ago. This is Al Jazeera. Um, this is an interview with Julian Assange regarding... His witnesses told him. Okay. Uh, let me go. I don't know if we want to watch this whole thing. This is a, a news thing that came out back in 2000, 2010 on Al Jazeera. And let's see if we can skip to the Julian Assange uh, sections. So there's a little intro. We'll skip the intro because we know what it is, right? Let's listen to Julian Assange. This is the person that our stream is focused on. This is the person that's being persecuted right now. And if you want to know, after this, I'll show you what he looks like right now. Gained a lot of attention because um, this was video and it's very easy for people to see what's going on. And to have faith that in somehow this is a true representation. It's not too complex. Um, there's no language barriers uh, for visual material. Yeah, I just drove over a body. <laughs> yeah. We released the, the policies behind uh, this material as far back as 2007. Actually, that's a fairly accurate assessment so far. Uh, the classified US military policies. We have been doing uh, things surrounding these events for a number of years. Oh, it's their fault for bringing their kids to a battle. That's right. As we get more resources, we are able to do things like send people to Baghdad to flesh out background of material we release, uh, which is great. We're just going to skip to the Julian Assange segments. Just listen a little bit more to him. Okay. And then I'm going to show you the video of... There was no positive identification. That is the location and uh, description of the individual that was never established. Uh, so there cannot be any allegation sustained that the particular people that this Apache helicopter will go on to attack uh, were known um, to be people who had been previously uh, shooting on US forces. So basically, this is just Julian Assange explaining the context of the video, putting it together for us and stuff like this. And you can take a look at this if you want. Here, I'll provide a link in the chat, just in case you're curious, you put a bookmark. And I, I followed this stuff in real time when it was coming out. Uh, where would you recommend I start with the whole whistleblower embargo? Uh, Tyler, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a whistleblower, but WikiLeaks, uh, I believe, has a fair bit of information laid out of how uh, anyone that has any information regarding the powers that be that they deem to be very important to our societies where they can uh, provide that information uh, to us right um and there's a here's a page uh collateral mur murder video and i'll add this to the chat as well you can read further and there's a longer version of this video and i've watched that as well a couple times um it's these traumatizing these this type of information is important uh, to keep track of because it really is empowers you to try to do the right thing right it really tries to do the right thing and this video I forgot about this video um, WikiLeaks collateral murders US soldier and this is an interview with, uh, so this is WikiLeaks collateral murder, U.S. soldier Ethan McCord. And I believe there's an interview with him. Uh, this video just... Yeah, this was powerful. Like, this was crazy powerful, uh, this video as well. So you can find it on the link that I provided, okay? Uh, hey, man, just dropping by to say what's up. Gibby from Carly fan. How are you doing? Thank you, my friend. My pleasure, Tyler. Uh, and be careful. Be careful out there. Okay. Uh, here's the video of Julian Assange coming out of court. Okay. It's a short video. One minute video. Okay. This is Julian Assange earlier this week when he was... Uh, went into court to figure out how everything was going to play out with his extradition hearing and it's a it's a 
it's a show trial, right? The UK right now, the United States, Canada, any Western countries, uh, their judi judicial system, our judicial system in Canada as well, when it comes to this caliber of of justice is a show trial there it's basically dictatorial uh, you have no hope of beating the centralized governments right they put on a little show trial and they say oh we give them fair justice and this was our our, our judgment and they either suicide you disappear you or throw you in jail and throw away the keys right so we'll read the update regarding what happened at that show trial the first hearing for julian assange's extradition but let's take a look at this video and and then we'll read the article okay this is a journalist from uh Rup Rupli, and these if you're trying to follow this information through any western western corporate propagandists right so also referred to as western mainstream media you won't get this information through Western mainstream media, Western mainstream propagandas. You have to go outside of your country. You have to rely on external news sources to find out what your country is involved with and what your country is doing. Okay, so this is a Russian agency capturing this footage, right? This is Julian Assange, actually before this, this is Julian Assange before court, but let's let's uh, let's uh, just in case you guys haven't seen it, uh, where is it? Where is it? Let's see if we can find it. Julian Assange embassy extraction. Right. Let me show you this footage first. This is Julian Assange being pulled out of the ecuadorian embassy by british police right so take a look at this footage and then we'll see watch the other footage on his recent court case hearing right and then we're going to read the article this footage was released um this is from the guardian it should be on why is it the guardian i don't want to give guardian any julian saw arrested ecuadorian embassy let's see if we can find it from the original source we want the original source not the sun man youtube this no cnn okay we'll do the guardian that's fine okay And this isn't the Guardian that captured this footage. This is a Russian news agency that captures this footage, right? The Guardian is just using it, right? So the Guardian had no reporters there sitting outside the Ecuadorian embassy holding a vigil to make sure that Julian Assange was safe. The Guardian is a, what was it called? A rag magazine, right? It's garbage. So if you're getting your news straight from the Guardian, you're getting secondhand news. Do not use any Western mainstream sources for secondhand news. Okay. I'm not sure what that sound was, but uh, I must take my leave. Guys, thanks for sticking around, Abdullah. Okay. Uh, the Guardian makes a good case study of smears against the side. Does it, uh, Tab? Uh, yeah. 
crazy free Julian Assange free Chelsea Manning why didn't Julian Julian flee to Russia like Snowden uh, Julian uh, there was an interview with Julian Assange right where he got lawyers he asked the lawyers if it was safe for him to stay within um, within the UK and one thing he said was at the time the lawyers that he had he said don't trust everything that lawyers tell you because the lawyers are just hired help i'm paraphrasing of course they gave him bad advice saying that he was safe in the uk julian assange should have got on a plane and gone back to australia or somewhere else where he, sh he would have been protected i don't think russia was the place for him to go okay wikileaks was instrumental in getting freedom for edward snowden as much freedom as possible where he's living in a foreign land right now right wikileaks was the reason that we got the snowden files right that snowden was able to go from hong kong and on his way to a safe haven he was basically his citizenship was revoked and he was stuck in russia and the russians gave him asylum in russia okay then the manafort search particularly illuminating peace my friend so here is julian assange now okay Okay. In the background where you can hear, I believe the person was saying, what a hero, what a hero, what a hero. Okay. Julian Assange, what a hero, what a hero. Now, this is footage from this week of Julian Assange coming out of court from the UK where it's a show trial going on, right? This is one of the most important people, the, as far as I'm concerned, the most important person on this planet in regards to geopolitics, economics, war, and stuff like this this video is on Rupli. okay it only has 5500 views why in the world does this video not have 500 million views right let me provide the link in the description of this video this is the persecution of julian assange this is the crucifixion of julian assange this is something that uh Wilhelm Reich has written about this is something that Robert Anton Wilson has written about uh, he looks it's it's he's been under torture psychological torture Gibby right they don't want us to see they don't want us to see this right so to hell with corporate mainstream propagandists when I talk to people that anyone that quotes me anything that BBC says, BBC says or CBC says or CBS says or CNN says, I look at them as if they're little, little, just unintelligent human beings that are programmed to regurgitate words coming out of centralized institutions, right? I haven't seen any news of Julian Assange on mainstream media in the UK. It's all about the Asian migrants that died in the lower east. Yeah, I heard about that too, uh, Tyler, which is very unfortunate. And why are the, those? I mean, the, the whole thing is insane. Russian news sources may have bias, but in a way, they fill a spot no Western news agencies fill. Racer kill, I agree with you 100%. If you want to, in general, right now, the way I see it, if you want to get news, important news about what's going on in your country you have to look outside of 
your country to news agencies that are reporting on what's going on in your country because right now information is controlled right by centralized power we have access to the internet but that is being censored and filtered and throttled right we're losing a lot of connectivity by uh, laws that centralized institutions centralized governments are passing to make sure that what has taken place in the last 15 20 years really with the internet where the amount of information that has come to the forefront about what our governments corporations and institutions have been doing to our societies they're trying to put a stop to that so there's a war being waged on information right now wikileaks is on the forefront of it okay it's on the front lines julian assange is the number one enemy for centralized institutions for example rt is not going to give you negative news on russia but they do have some great programs like on contact with chris edges racer kill 100 percent agree and julian assange had a program on rt that had like six episodes seven episodes five or five to seven episodes that i watched watched them all like a couple of times where they had huge discussions okay about uh, information uh the world geopolitics economics and technology right and that that program that they had i forget what it was called uh must watch programs you think they will get back to the level of narrative control they once had to a certain degree uh tab they have more control now on the narrative than they did in the past unfortunately with social media with all the uneducated people i'm going to call them uneducated because they uncaring people or people who are addicted to social networks that only get their news from one social platform the worst one obviously being facebook like i talk to people that facebook is their main news feed when i talk to people like that i don't even engage them on any intellectual level right the only thing i talk about is that they're completely brainwashed completely programmed so to a certain degree they have a tremendous amount of control over a huge segment of the population but they don't care about you know they, they don't they're not trying to silence those people because they, they they can those people can talk about whatever they want even julian assange but they can easily be distracted by something flashing onto them their news feed can easily be controlled so the centralized institutions don't really care about those people that are using these social platforms to get their news right or one social platform because they could easily filter that out right the people they care about is people like to a certain degree like us who are having an open discussion of what's going on who are sharing information right that have multiple sources multiple platforms that we do this on okay i call them insipid uh dollards is that what you call them <laughs> tyler i gotta look, look look that up see what what that means got to go chicho okay gibby thank you for sticking around don't worry there is still people who know the truth about things and will still tell others peace out peace out brother peace out brother or sister of course Gibby or sister of course right so let's uh let's do this last thing and we're gonna follow this up again by the way we're gonna we're gonna be uh doing another live stream on WikiLeaks on uh, on Tuesday but I definitely want to read this article uh to you guys uh X how are you doing wait a second there's a little X now X did you change your name you got capital X's going on it just uh, means tasteless stupid people is that what it means uh, pretty much pretty much so here's an article okay from Greg Murray he was in court the last video that we saw with Julian Assange in the paddy wagon right he had just come out of court and this is a report of what took place in that court right so this is linked up directly to the video we just saw on uh, uh, the, on Julian Assange being in uh, in that paddy wagon. Okay. 
So we already read the update, but I'll read the update to you again. Okay, this might take uh, a little bit of time. It is a it is a long article. Um, so update. I have received scores of requests to republish and or translate this article. It is absolutely free to use and reproduce, and I should be delighted if and everybody does. The word, uh, the world should know what is being done to Julian Assange. So far, over two hundred thousand people have read it on this blog site alone, and it has already been reproduced on myriad other sites, uh, some with much bigger readership than my own. I have seen translate uh, translations into German, Spanish and French, and at least extracts in Catalan and Turkish. I only ask that you reproduce it complete or if edits are made, plainly indicate them. Many thanks, right? So this is uh, Craig Murray doing this reporting. I'm going to provide the link obviously in the description of this video, and I'm just going to send the link to you guys in chat that are watching this live uh, if you want to click on it and read it. So I'm not going to read the chat anymore, uh, gang, until I finish this article. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to lose um, my my place in this. And it's it's a long piece. OK, so we're going to just spend the time reading this. I should have maybe brought my lapel mic and did the reading so we could upload it just by itself, but maybe we do it another time. Okay. Quote I was deeply shaken while witnessing yesterday's events in Westminster Magistrates Court. Every decision was railroaded through over the scarcely heard arguments and objections of Assange's legal team by a magistrate who barely pretended to be listening. Before I get on uh, the blatant lack of fair process, the first thing I must note was Julian's condition. I, I was badly shocked by just how much weight my friend had lost, by the speed his hair has receded, and by the appearance of premature and vastly accelerated aging. He has a pronounced limp I have, I have never seen before. Since his arrest, uh, since uh, since his arrest, he has lost over 15 kilos in weight. But this physical appearance was not as shocking as his mental deterioration. When asked to give his name and date of birth, he struggled visibly over several seconds to recall both. I will come to the important content of his statement at the end of proceedings in due course, but his difficulty in making it was very evident. It was a real struggle for him to articulate the words and focus his train of thought. Yesterday, uh, until yesterday, I had always been quite uh, uh, skeptical of those who claimed that Julian Assange's treatment amounted to torture, even of Niles Mel's, the UN Special Repertoir on Torture, and skeptical of those who suggested he may be subjected to deliberate, deliberate, debilitating, debilitating drug treatment. Okay, I'm going to end the quote here for a second, just because we haven't touched on this. But Nils Melzer, the US UN Special Repertoire on Torture, this is a, a person that the United Nations, one of the people that the United Nations has tasked with checking out the condition of people in custody to see if they're being tortured or not. And I've watched a fair bit of interview and read some stuff that he's put out since uh, he came public stating that Julian Assange is being tortured. One of the things that Neil, uh, Nils Melzer said, stated during an interview was he was skeptical. He went into this uh, interview with Julian Assange and he went into it believing that uh, not believing a lot of the hype associated with what was, what was happening with Julian Assange. He didn't know very much about Assange or WikiLeaks, right? His main focus is trying to interview people that are in captivity to find out if they're being tortured. So he went into it unbiased. He came out 100% pro WikiLeaks, pro Julian Assange, stating publicly in countless interviews that Julian Assange is being tortured, right? So this is a huge event that took place. 
the writer here, Craig, Craig Murray, is stating that he was skepti skeptical that you could call Julian Assange's treatment torture. But after witnessing Julian Assange, he's saying, yep, it's torture, right? Continuing with the article, I'm just going to make the text a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to read. Quote, but having attended the trials in Uzbekistan of several victims of extreme torture and having worked with survivors from Sierra Leone and elsewhere, I can tell you that yesterday, yesterday changed my mind entirely and Julian exhibited exactly the symptoms of torture victims brought blinking into the light particularly in terms of disorientation, confusion, and the real struggle to assert free will through the fog of learned helplessness. I had been even more skeptical of those who claimed, as a senior member of his legal team did to me on Sunday night, that they were worried that Julian might not live to, to the end of the extradition process. I now find myself not only believing it, but haunted by the thought. Everybody in that court yesterday saw that one of the greatest journalists and most important dissidents of our time is being tortured to death by the state before our eyes. To see my friend, the most articulate man, the fastest thinker I have ever known, reduced to that shambling and incoherent wreck was unbearable. Yet the agents of the state, particularly the callous magistrate, Vanessa, uh, Ber Barrett, sir, uh, were not just prepared, but eager to be part of this blood sport. She actually told him that if he were incapable of following proceedings, then his lawyers could explain what had happened to him later. The question of why a man who, by the very charges against him, was acknowledged to be highly intelligent and competent had been reduced by the state to somebody incapable of following court proceedings gave her no not a millisecond of concern the charge against julian assange is very specific conspiring with chelsea manning to publish the iraq war logs the afghan war logs and the state department cables the charges are nothing nothing to do with sweden nothing to do with sex and nothing to do with the 2016 U.S. election. A simple clarification the mainstream media appears incapable of underst understanding. The purpose of yesterday's hearing was, was case management to determine the timetable for the extradition proceedings. The key points at issue were that Julian, uh, Julian's defense was requesting more time to prepare their evidence and arguing that the political offenses were specifically excluded from the extra, extradition treaty. There should, they argued, therefore be a preliminary hearing to de determine whether the extradition treaty applied at all. The reasons given by Assange's defense team for more time to prepare were both compelling and startling that they had very limited access to their client in jail and had not been permitted to hand him any documents about the case until one week ago. He had also only just been given limited computer access and all, all his relevant records and materials had been seized from the Ecuadorian embassy by the US government. He had no access to his own material, materials for the purpose of preparing his defense. Furthermore, the defense argued they were in touch with the Spanish court about a very important and relevant legal case in Madrid, which would provide vital evidence. It showed that the CIA had been directly ordering spying on Julian in the embassy through a Spanish company, UC Global, contracted to provide security there. Crucially, this included spying on privileged conversations between Assange and his lawyers, discussing his defense against the, these extradition proceedings, which had been in train in the U.S. since 2010. In any normal pr process, that fact would in itself be sufficient to have the extradition proceedings dismissed. Incidentally, I learned on Sunday that the Spanish material produced in court, which had been commissioned by the CIA, specifically included high-resolution video of Julian Assange and I discussing various matters. 
The evidence to the Spanish court also included a CIA plot to kidnap Assange, which went to the U.S. authorities' attitude to law lawfulness in his case and treatment treatment he might expect in the United States. Julian's team explained that the Spanish legal process would ha was happening now, and the evidence from from it would be extremely important but it might not be finished and thus the evidence not fully validated and available in time for the court purpose for the court proposed timetable for the assange extradition hearing for the pr prosecution james lewis qc stated that the government strongly opposed any delay being given for the defense to prepare and strongly opposed any separate considerations of the question of whether the charge was a political offense excluded by extradition treaty. Barretzer Ber uh, took her cue from Lewis and stated categorically that the date for the extradition hearing, 25th February, could not be changed. She was open to changes in dates for submissions of evidence and responses before this and called a 10-minute recess for the persecution um, prosecution and defense to agree these steps what happened next was very intrusive there were five representatives of the u.s government present initially three and two more arrived in the course of the hearing seated at desks behind the lawyers in court the pro pro prosecution lawyers immediately went into the huddle with the u.s representatives then went outside the court with them to decide how to how to respond on the dates after the recess the defense team stated that they could not in their professional opinion adequately prepare if the hearing date were kept to february but within Ber barrett barrett instructions um, instruction to do so they nevertheless outlined the proposed time timetable on deli um, delivering on evidence in response to this, Lewis's juror counsel uh, scurried to the back of the court to consult the Americans again while Lewis actually told the judge he was taking instructions from those behind. It is important to note that at, as he said this, it was not the UK Attorney General's office who were being consulted by the US Embassy, embassy Lewis uh, who were being consulted by the U.S. Embassy. Lewis received the, his American instructions and agreed that the defense might have two months to prepare their evidence. They had said they needed an absolute minimum of three, but the, Feb but the February hearing date may not be moved. Ber Berritzer gave a ruling agreeing everything Lewis had said. At this stage, it was unclear why we were sitting through this farce. The U.S. government was dictating its instructions to Lewis, who was relaying those instructions to Berzer, who was ruling them as her legal decision. The charade might as well have been cut, and the U.S. government simply sat on the bench to control who, uh, to control the whole process. Nobody could sit there and believe they were in any part of the genuine legal process, or the Berzer was giving a, a moment's consideration to the argument of the defense. Her facial expressions on the few occasions she looked at the defense raged from contempt through boredom and sarcasm. When she looked at Lewis, she was attentive, open, and warm. The extradition is plainly being rushed through in accordance with a Washington dictated timetable. Apart from a desire to preempt the Spanish court providing evidence on CIA actively in sabotaging the defense, activity in sabotaging the defense, what makes the February date so important to the US? I would welcome any thoughts, right? So this is a question that was posed. Barrett, sir, dismissed the defense's request for a separate prior hearing to consider whether the extradition treaty applied at all. Without bothering to give any reason why, possibly she had not proper uh, properly memorized what what Lewis had been instructing instructing her to agree with yet this is article 4 
of the US UK US extradition treaty 2007 in full okay so I'm gonna read this little excerpt uh, that's been posted in uh, in this article okay I'm just gonna take a little breather um, and have a little sip because that was uh, fast reading on my part okay so let's read this little uh, article 4 of the UK US extradition treaty from 2007 okay article 4 political and military offenses number one extradition shall not be granted if the offense for which extradition is requested is it a is a political offense end of story as, I'm ending my reading but as far as I'm concerned end of story this is a political offense this is a political situation extradition over right back to the reading number two for the purposes of this treaty the following offenses shall not be considered political offenses a an offense for which both parties have the obligation pursuant to a multilateral international agreement to extradite the person sought or to submit the case to their uh, competent authorities to for decisions as to uh, as to um, prosecution b a murder or other violent crime against the person of a head of state or one of the parties or of members of the head of state's family c murder manslaughter malicious wounding or inflicting grievous bodily harm d an offense involving kidnapping abduction or any form of unlawful detention including the taking of a hostage e placing or using or threatening the placement or use of an explosive incendiary or destructive device or firearm capable of engaging life endangering life of causing grievous bodily harm or of causing substantial property damage f possession of an explosive incendiary or destructive device capable of an endangering life or causing grievous bodily harm or of causing substantial property damage g an attempt or a conspiracy to commit parti uh, participation in the commission of aiding and abetting counseling or uh, procuring the commission of or being an accessory there for or after the fact to any of the following offenses okay three notwithstanding the terms of paragraph two of this article extradition should not be granted if the competent authority of the request state determines that the request was politically motivated in the united states the executive branch is the competent authority for the purpose of this article four the competent authority of the requested state may refuse extradition for offenses under military law that are not offenses under ordinary criminal law in the united states the executive branch is the competent authority for the purposes of this article okay end of the excerpt for this and let's continue reading the article okay quote on the face of it what assange is accused of is the very definition of political offense if this is not then what is it is not covered by any of the uh, exceptions from that listed there there is every reason to consider whether this charge is excluded by the extradition treaty and to do so before the long and very costly process of considering all the evidence should the treaty apply but Bar barrett sir simply dismissed the argument out of hand just in case anybody was left in any doubt as to what was happening here lewis then stood up and suggested that the defense should not be allowed to waste the course time with a lot of arguments all arguments for the sub, uh, sub substantive hearing should be given in writing in advance and guillotine should be applied his exact his exact words so let me read that again all arguments for the sub substantive hearing should be given in writing in advance and guillotine quote guillotine should be applied end quote his exact words to arguments and witnesses in court 
perhaps of five hours for the defense. The defense has suggested they would need more than the schedule of five days to present um, to present their case. Lewis countered that the entire hearing should be over in two days. Barrett, sir, said this was not procedurally the correct moment to argue, uh, agree this, but she will consider it once she had received the evidence bundles or well, bundles. OK, spoiler Co uh, bracket spoiler. Brett, sir, is going to do Lewis do as Lewis instructs and cut the substantive hearing short. OK, continuing with the quote. Brett, sir, then uh, capped it all by saying the February hearing will be held, not at the com uh, comparatively open and accessible Westminster Magistrates Court where we uh, where we were, but but at Belmash Magistrates Court, the grim high security facility used for preliminary legal proceedings of terrorists attached to the maximum security prison where Assange is being held. There are only six seats for the public in even the largest court at Belmash and the object and the object is plainly to evade public scrutiny and make sure the Bar Barretzer is not exposed in public again to a genuine account of her proceedings like this one, this one you are reading. I will probably be unable to get in the substantive hearing at Belmash. Plainly, the authorities were disconcerned by the hundreds of uh, good people who had turned up to support Julian. They hoped that far fewer will get get uh, get to the much less acceptable accessible Belmarsh. I am fairly certain and recall I had long uh, I had a long career as a diplomat that the two extra American government officials who arrived halfway through proceedings were armed security personnel brought in because of of alarm at the number of protesters around the hearing in which were present senior U.S. officials. The move to Bell Marsh uh, may be an American initiative. Assange's defense team objected strenuously to the move to Bell Marsh, in particular on the grounds that there are no conference rooms available there to consult their client and they have very inadequate access to him in jail. Barrett, sir, dismissed this objection offhand and with a very definitive smirk. Finally, Barrett, sir, turned to Julian and ordered him, ordered him to stand and asked him if he had understood the proceedings. He replied in negative, said that he could not think and gave very uh, and gave every appearance of disorientation. Then he seemed to find an inner strength. He drew himself up a little and said, now this is quoting Julian, I do not understand how this process is equitable. This superpower had 10 years to prepare for this case, and I can't even access my writings. It is very difficult where I am to do anything. These people have unlimited resources, end quote, right? And quoting Julian Assange, back to the article, quote, the effort then seemed to be, uh, seemed to become too much. His voice dropped and he became increasingly confused and incoherent. He spoke of whistleblowers and publishers being labeled enemies of the people, then spoke about his children's DNA being stolen and of being spied on in his meetings with his psychologist. I am not suggesting at all that Julian was wrong about these points, but he could not properly frame nor articulate them. He was plainly not himself, not himself, very ill, and it was just horrible, horribly painful to watch. Barretzer showed neither sympathy nor the least concern. She tartly ob observed that if he could not understand what had happened, his lawyers would explain it to him and she sped, uh, swept out of court. The whole experience was profoundly unsettling. It was very plain that there was no genuine process of legal consideration happening here. What we, have, what we had was a naked demonstration of the power of the state 
and a naked dictation of proceedings by the Americans. Julian was in a box behind bulletproof glass, and I and the 30-odd other members of the public who had squeezed in in, different, in a different box behind more bulletproof glass. I do not know if he could see me or his other friends in the court, or if he was capable of recognizing anybody. He gave no indication that he did. In Belmarsh, he is kept in a com complete isolation for 23 hours a day. He is permitted 45 minutes ex exercise. If he has to be moved, they, cl they clear the corridors before he walks down them, and they lock up all cell doors to ensure he has no contact with any other prisoner outside the short and strictly supervised exercise period. There is no possible justification for this inhumane regime used as used on major terrorists being imposed on a publisher who is a who is a re remand prisoner. I have been both ca cataloging and protesting for years the increasingly authoritarian power of the UK state, but that the most gross abuse could be uh, so open and undistinguished, uh, un disguised is still a shock the campaign of uh, demonization and dehumanization against julian based on government and media lie about government and media lie has led to a situation where he can be slowly killed in public sight and arraigned on a charge of publishing the truth about government wrongdoing while receiving no assistance from liberal society Unless Julian, unless Julian is released shortly, he will be destroyed. If the state could do this, then who is next? Okay. End of the article. Now, thank you for listening to that. Dante, how are you doing? I haven't read any of the chat. I just want to make sure we got through that article. He's being treated like a caged animal for exposing war crimes. 100% Tyler, which is insanity to me, which is insanity. And it's going without mass demonstrations. This is being done in, in, in full view of people who are paying attention, right? Which is insane to me. Is this an anti legendary Rob Boss anti incent stream? I don't know what that means. This was a pretty good intro to Julian Assange for those of you who might not know who he is, where he's come from, what he has shared. Uh, what is Craig Murphy's relationship to Assange? As far as I know, this is the first time I heard about Craig Murphy, by the way. Um, I hadn't read anything that he had posted uh, before this. I don't believe so anyway. This just hit my radar because he was one of the few people that was in court uh, witnessing what happened with Julian Assange. So if he dies, what can we do? I am terrified people will just move on as if it didn't happen. Uh, Funky Monkey... Uh, yeah, it makes my blood boil as well, Funky Monkey. Uh, here's the thing, Funky Monkey. Uh, there's an interview of, um, I forget who it was, I think it was 60 Minutes um, rag news broadcast in the United States. They're garbage as well. But they actually, uh, I basically missed the entire. Uh, Dante, we are basically, this is what we ended up doing, Dante. I gave a little intro to Julian Assange, uh, stated what we're going to do, and we're going to, be doing this uh what's happening to assange we covered in the stream dante so i basically stated that uh we're gonna do this is part one we're gonna do part two on tuesday okay and we're gonna do one julian assange most likely on a monthly basis if not more frequent okay depending on how things proceed okay so we're gonna catch up with what's going on with julian assange uh what we did dante was we talked about julian assange what he'd accomplished uh, who WikiLeaks was. We talked a little bit about Chelsea Manning, right? And uh, um, Chelsea Manning and some of the other people involved, okay? We watched the short version of the collateral murder video uh, 
which is really the thing that brought the full weight of the United States down on Trump, uh, down on Trump, down on um, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, right? And we talked a little bit about that. We paused. We read uh, some of the excerpts that were in the collateral murder video, uh, sort of putting it into context. And we listened to a little bit of Julian Assange uh, talking about the collateral murder video. We watched a short little video from uh, Ripley that was released when the British police extracted Julian Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy where he had the full beard and they're carrying him out, right? And we watched the short little video where um, he was uh, coming out of the court and was put in a paddy wagon uh, just a few days ago in his extradition hearing where you can see um, Julian Assange, he's, he's definitely aged dramatically in the last couple of years, right? And he, he looked uh, not even half a man, right? And from there, we went on and read this article, this article by Craig Murray here. Let me link it up again. It's a pretty important article. And uh, it's basically an article uh, documenting what took place in court this week during the extradition hearing. OK, um, so that's where we are right now. We're going to follow the stuff up. We're going to do more uh, Julian Assange coverage. OK. And as far as uh, Funky Monkey, just to reply to you, uh, I'm going to read your comment again. If he dies, what can we do? I am terrified people will just move on as if it didn't matter. There is an interview with Julian Assange. Let me see if I can find it. And this is pretty important as well. I'm going to um, Assange Martyr. Uh, let me see if I can find that video. Martyr. Da, 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 da. Well, the spelling was wrong. So martyr. Da, 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 sixty. I believe it was a sixty minutes article. Sixty or sixty minutes interview. Oops. Oh come on. Oops. Come on. Oh, shit. Let's see if we can find that little excerpt. It's going to be hard to find there. Yeah. Okay, this is not good to go. Let's let's try Google. Maybe Google will give it to us. I might have to do it on uh, YouTube. See if we can find it. Here's the interview. Okay. WikiLeaks Julian Assange part one, and they ask him. Actually, let me see if I can just find a little segment. Uh, video, video, video. We just want the little segments. Okay, not so. CBC, we don't want that. Oh my God, this is all like CBC and crap. We don't want to go there. We just want. I'm gonna to go to YouTube. Okay, let's just go here. We're not gonna run this. We're just gonna run this. A YouTube search is brutal as well. Very difficult, very difficult to find what we need. You Ju know what? I'll try and find it for the follow up part two. OK, but basically in the 60 minute article, they ask him. Um, is uh, your dissident, your this, your that, uh, and you're a martyr and Julian Assange basically commented that not yet and he does has no desire to be a martyr but if Julian Assange is suicided and the rate that he's going at he's um, he might either be suicided or murdered or, or locked away forever right he will become a martyr a lot of people are doing what they are doing right now because of Julian Assange, me included, some of the things that you see me doing, right? The work that I'm doing. If Julian Assange is not freed, if Julian Assange is extradited, locked away forever, suicided, I can guarantee you that a substantial amount of my work 
will be geared towards sharing as much as I can on this level okay and I can guarantee you there are millions of other people that are going to do the same right so those people who are oblivious to what is happening right now some by choice some by program programming some because they lack education or inspiration right they are just non-players in a in a game right uh, they will hear about this and if they don't uh, they will continue to be non-player beings that slowly they will watch they will witness their lifestyles deteriorate because that is the ultimate goal of neoliberalism and centralization which is take away freedom from individuals right which is take away accountability from power which is what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and all these whistleblowers have done they want to hold power accountable okay we'll see how this plays out uh, as far as I'm concerned this is one of the most important things taking place right now and we will continue to cover this I know I've said I won't be loading on any more current events live streams on YouTube uh, we did the current events live stream last week regarding that okay uh, I haven't loaded it on YouTube yet I'm gonna be loading this on YouTube tomorrow the Tuesday one will be loaded on YouTube on Wednesday and then after that we're gonna load on the any math and the politics one most likely politics one saying that this is gonna be the last live stream that we're gonna load on YouTube but we will any live streams we do regarding Julian Assange and WikiLeaks they will be loaded on YouTube as well. We're just not going to cover current events. Okay. Vix. If time travel was for real, I'd time travel back and go to the UK and tell Assange to get the hell out of the UK and go back to Australia or wherever he thinks he would be safe. Okay. Aside from that, gang, thank you, Chicho, for everything that you do. My pleasure, man. I'm doing the bare minimum as far as I'm concerned. Um, as much as I can uh, I wish I could do more and I will work towards doing more in the future okay I will try my best uh, with your help with your support uh, we'll do as much as we can okay sorry for the somber live stream there will be many more of these coming um, unfortunately this is the road that we're on uh, more power to uh, all the protesters out there who are protesting a centralization of power more power to all our comrades out there who are trying to hold power capital accountable okay you're not alone my desktop image is let me find it for you No, let me bring it over here. Oh, dot com. If you go to my about page on my website, go to my about page. Art worth viewing. Art and design worth viewing. If you go down to here, this part, art and design worth viewing. Doop, click on that. This is one of my favorite artists of all time his name is Zibisky Bukow here let me bring this up I can't pronounce that okay as far as I'm concerned I have no idea what that is um, as far as I'm concerned he is one of the greatest artists around if I had unlimited funds I would buy everything that he he had ever painted and I would buy a house a large house and make turn it into a museum and display his art unfortunately he passed away he was murdered in his apartment not in his apartment but in the, in the corridors of an apartment building he was living on because someone was trying to rob him of very little money this is him okay uh, you can see the name hopefully you can here let me copy the name and post it in the chat okay 
he his artwork is absolutely brilliant and here is his some of his art okay absolutely phenomenal one day i will try my best to have one of his paintings on in my house okay just phenomenal just phenomenal absolutely brilliant okay the depth of this is insane absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant okay and unfortunately like many greats many of the visionaries in our in our world uh his life was cut short by by those people seeking currency brilliant brilliant one day maybe we'll do a live stream and just watch just look at his art right and this is the one on my desktop okay absolutely phenomenal Okay, gang, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for being here, Dante. Mm -hmm. Trolls at a time. Oh, uh, if those trolls really understood the meaning of life, really, if they really got it, we do our best, Dante. We'll do our best. Okay, thank you for being here, gang. Thank you for taking care of business, Dante. Martha, mess, how are you doing? Void, awesome, thank you. Thanks for the stream. My pleasure, swag. My pleasure, swag. Thanks for being here, gang. X. I'll see you guys on Tuesday, and we're going to continue with what we've been doing. Uh, we're going to... I'll try to get some more info together. There's a, There's a whole bunch of other things that... I plan on going through, but there it includes so much what's going on right now with Julian Assange that we can only get through so much. And I knew this was going to be a two-parter, right? And we will stay up to this, uh, stay up on the case. All right, bye, Chicho. Hope I can catch more of the stream next time. Me too, Dante. Thank you for being here, brother. We didn't have really any troll issues. For some reason, trolls seem to pop in towards the end of the stream sometimes um which is unfortunate because it's part of our education system right they're so weak uh weak-minded really uh which is which is crazy uh everybody right now we have so much power available to us to become more become so such powerful creatures and some people just try to live in their void right take care everyone peace